And welcome back to Meet the Authors. So glad you could keep with us. We have today Jim Matthews. So Jim, hello. Welcome for com and thanks for coming and join us. So Jim is our, our author with a cookbook. It's an amazing cookbook. It was it's been published with these great glassy uh, glossy photos of all his recipes, over 200 photos, and each one associated with a little history. So tell us about your book, Jim. Well, it's uh, show it to show it to your camera. The title is uh, Barbecue with Benefits: A Guide to Healthier Grilling and Smoking. And I like that part, healthier, because that's really, so many people, when you think of barbecue, you think of fatty, greasy stuff, but this one's really trim and lean and good for you. Well, this is one of the areas that separates it from other barbecue books, is healthy recipes. Uh, lower fat meat, poultry, seafood, vegetables. Basically, what you want to do to eat healthy is to shop the perimeter of the grocery store, stay out of the middle where all the high fat, high salt uh, foods are. The other aspect that separates it is the amount of information in it. Most cook, all cookbooks have recipes. Very few tell you where the recipe came from, who has cooking hints, uh, food tips, food history, trivia, food science. Yeah, this is a fun book. This is fun in so many ways. Yeah. This is talking, uh, each, each section gives a little history, talks about things like um, where the fajitas came from and how people in the Stone Age uh, used beef jerky, maybe beef jerky. So each section gives you a history about the meat. In fact, you told me a great line was before we went on camera that um, it's the only cookbook, somebody said it was the only cookbook they ever bought they wanted to stay up at night just to read because it was so interesting with the little stories about them. So I worked on this. I'm not sure exactly how long I worked on it. It has over 200 recipes. So if I did one a week, that's four years. And you were testing on your family. Tell us about that. Uh, when I started, I had two young boys. Uh, I would commonly do a recipe with maybe two or three different seasonings. So I'd ask the family, uh, do you like t recipe A, B, or C? So I'd find out what seasoning mixes were best and uh, that's basically how I did the research on the recipes. The food trivia, the food science and all that, uh, I liked reading about food. So the, uh, that came along at the same time I was developing recipes. Uh, I come from a technical background. I'm a retired uh, research geophysicist. You're a retired research geophysicist with a special interest in cooking and reading. So how long were you a uh, physicist? Where did you work? I spent three and a half years in the Navy. Then I worked for the Navy for 30 years, retired from Naval Research Laboratory. Uh, then I decided to be a tree hugger, and I worked five years for on an EPA grant. I like that. And finally, My daughter's a tree hugger. <laughs> finally, I retired from University of Southern Mississippi. Uh, what were you doing with the, you were the researching? And did you teach courses too? On the book, you mean? No, in or, USM, you retired from Oh, uh, no, I did not uh, teach. I was uh, head of a GIS remote sensing lab. And funny enough, most of the work we did was counter drug, working with the Mississippi Bureau of Narcotics. Ha. Huh. So yeah, Mississippi has the uh, marijuana plants, don't they, for the, for the country? Yes. We, uh, developed a neural network to predict areas most likely for outdoor grows. Yeah, yeah, now you can't, too bad you can't hook up with Colorado now because with all the experience in cooking and with the drugs, that would be sort of a, a great combo. But next recipe book has marijuana recipes. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding, just kidding. So, <laughs> barbecuing with marijuana, I can see the title now, be a bestseller. Um, Probably. So you got something to read, read us a little section, this will be fun. I wanted a lot of information in here, which most cookbooks don't have. So here's a sample, Tex-Mex fajitas. The fajita is pure Tex-Mex. They were developed during the 1960s as the cheapest means of feeding vaqueros on South Texas ranches near El Del Rio. The word fajita means little strap after the strap muscle of the cow's belly. The little strap. Fajita means little strap from strap muscles. So that's, that's where the meat comes from. Yes, it was the cheapest cut on the cow. Uh, as their po popularity spread beyond the ranches, the cut of meat was upgraded to skirt steak, a cheap cut, cheap yet somewhat better than the belly, from, also from the belly. 
because of the fajitas popularity has spread even more, skirt meat is no longer cheap. Eventually, uh, they upgraded to uh, flank steak and those are no longer cheap. No longer cheap. No, beef is not cheap, no matter how so, you do it. So I love fajitas, you know, just doing little strips and barbecue. So yeah, tell me some examples of how do you, how would you recommend cooking fajita meat? If you grill it, you say everything is Everything in here is either grilled, roasted, or smoked. Okay. It's cooked outdoors. Uh, fajita meat is thin, so you have to pretty much cook it to medium. You cannot uh, cook a thin piece of meat to medium rare which yeah. most, well, steaks I like medium rare, but uh, Me too. Thin. I'm a rare guy. I tell them, you put it on the grill, you flip it over, and then you turn the grill on. That's how rare I like my meat. <laughs> Keeps the flavor in. There's another one about running it by the stove on the way out. Yeah, there you go. You got a little heat as you went by there. Yes. <laughs> So that's good. So you live in Mississippi, huh? You live over in past Christian. Yes. How long have you been a Mississippian? Since 1976. That's a long time. And your children, uh, where are they now? Uh, one lives here in Mississippi and one uh, lives in Houston, Texas. I grew up in Houston. I like that. Where, uh, where Mississippi uh, is your one living? In, uh, in the pass with us. Oh, lives nearby. Does he have yes. grandkids? No. Don't have any grandchildren. Oh. Uh, the older one has a traumatic brain injury, so he lives with us. The younger one is uh, in retail business in uh, Houston. Okay. And manages a sporting goods store. Well, that's good. My first grandchild's on the way, so you'll hear about it on this show. Just warning you. All right. So, <laughs> well, that's good. And so your book is available where? In Ocean Springs, it's available at Coastal Megpie. In uh, Biloxi, it's available at Southern Bound Books, at uh, Beauvoir Gift Shop, and the Biloxi Visitor Center. It's also available online at my website, which uh, it's available tax-free and free shipping. Uh, also on the website is a food blog where I post uh, recipes weekly on Thursdays. These so far are recipes that are not that have been developed since the cookbook was written. They're also on the my Facebook page uh, is a notice of the recipe which is being posted, and in between recipe posts I put in trivia. For example, tomorrow I will post a grilled Mexican corn recipe. Following Monday I will post a, a trivia. I think the one next week will be that the modern English words cow and pig come from the old English Saxon language, whereas beef and pork come from the Normans. What fun. So yeah. that's the kind of trivia. It is fun. This is fun about the history of food, uh, where the words come from, where the recipes come from, how the meats develop. It's really a, a great book. What I want you to do is open it up. I want you to show some of these pictures. There's lots of colored photos. You know, a lot of times you get recipe books. This one comes with these, um, what do you call those, spiral openings so that it's easy to hold I've open. always called it GBC binding, but the reason I did that is so it'll lay flat, you don't have to prop it open when you're yeah. trying to Show them a couple of pictures from this. The really first chapter is the history of barbecue, uh -huh. which is, that's what I call traditional barbecue. Uh, wow, a growing, glowing in, pit of in, skull, in, the huh? in the ground, you don't see that anymore, but for years we did about a 140 pound hog every New Year's on the, in the backyard. My wife would do about five pounds of black-eyed peas and four like or five heads of cabbage. That's it. It's good to see you, Jim. We're so glad you come and, and be our you. guest and show off your book. And it's uh, $20. $20, no tax, free shipping, all copies signed by the author, the website barbecuebenefits.net. All right. Thanks so much for, uh, for coming on our show. All the author's books are available through my website.